in a John Grisham version of Runaway Jury, since he created this world, um, the the Roar character was just as rapacious and, and ambitious and sort of corrupt as the the defendant's attorney, and certainly as as Rankin Fitch, the Hackman character. And in the script, we evolved so there was more of a dynamic shift between the two. And as such, once we had Dustin Hoffman in the movie, which happened you know pretty early on, we all knew we had to have a scene between these two guys. It became the big task over the period of months, development, and even during shooting to get that scene right. Yes, that scene was not in the original uh, script. Um, Dusty had started the film, I think, in the first part of November of last year. I had worked, I think, four or five weeks, and then I came in, and we overlapped a couple of weeks. They wanted a scene between the two of us, but it just they didn't have the time to write that. So Dusty finished his work and went off uh, the month of December. I finished in mid-December, and then we came back in January, the last couple of days of, of shooting on, on the film in New Orleans, and they had written uh, this terrific seven-minute scene. You know, the, the bathroom scene between Gene and I was just one of those things. Uh, Gene gets hired to do a part in this movie before I do. I get hired, I don't know how many weeks later. Uh, the director is talking to Gene or I, I can't remember, suddenly realizes, what, you guys know each other? For all those years, you never worked together? Oh, my God. And so, it, you know, we credit Gary Fleeter. We are both very pleased to, you know, to go back to do that. It was, it was great fun. We only had one 12-hour day to shoot this five-page scene. So the challenge for me was, how do we pull it off? And the answer was rehearsal. The Irish juror is not uh, King Solomon. He's a roofer with a, with a mortgage and wants to go home, sit in his barca lounger and let the cable TV walk over it. A lot of times in films, I don't like to rehearse. I l I'd rather rehearse on camera. I'd rather uh, have the tension of the moment, the immediacy of, of trying to do it at that, that particular time and rehearse for the crew. And there's always, you know, 30 or 40 people standing around watching you. So there is a bit of tension there. There's a, a bit of, hey, I got to do this. I'm on the line here. I like that. You know, I, I really enjoy that, that process of putting myself on the line constantly. So we had an almost, I think, four and a half or five hour rehearsal the day before we shot that scene in New Orleans. Talking about every beat and the text and the words and reading through it and finding things out. You call a system that we have in our courts colored bubbles? A system that calls for 12 people to sit and listen to the testimony? Uh, no, that ain't no colored bubbles. That's a system, bitch. Well, and then after two and a half hours of that, we took the scene onto the set and began to sort of walk and then block the scene. And it was a very organic process. This is the interesting thing about that scene, is that these two great actors, both of, both of whom have won, you know, I think at least two Oscars per actor, they were still nervous. And they still wanted to perform and to achieve and to, to show how, you know, to show the best version of this scene of their work. We have a, a tenacity of, of trying to get what we believe to be is authentic. And we have, at the same time, we have it has not solved an insecurity that has remained constant for all this time. I'm not sure that's a bad thing. No, it's a good thing. You yeah, know? Absolutely. It's a good thing because you, you, it, it keeps you alive in, in a strange way. You're never secure. It, there's, you're always on the edge. Always on the edge. You feel like you don't know it. Yeah. You don't, you haven't found the key. Somebody you know, asked me, you know, there are specific things about acting. I, 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 I couldn't tell you specific things about it. I can tell you uh, kind of intuitive kind of things. Don't do that. Really? Yeah. You messing with my witness. What's the line? You're messing with, uh, this is about my witness. Yeah, hey, 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 don't, don't do that. This is about my witness. You're messing with my case, my client, and the rules of all that govern the country here. So don't do that. The country? Yeah. Oh, I can figure for a patriot, Mr. Roy. The rehearsal process that day was about getting rid of the nerves. And, that, and therefore, on the, on the tape, you'll see Dustin and Gene playing around with the text and the staging. And I think that was part of the idea of just breaking the tension, of relaxing. Because I certainly felt the pressure that um, here we had this one day to shoot the scene everyone would be looking for. In fact, as we, as we record this now, there's all this sort of press about this being the first scene together in their entire career. And that pressure was real, and it was palpable. We were hearing the hype, and neither of us liked it. You know, first time you work, oh boy, this is going to be something. And they would say, oh, De Niro and Pacino, they did heat. Oh, you got to do it. I mean, we look at each other, what the, you know, <laughs> it's just two old guys talking in the bathroom. <laughs> You know, give us a break. <laughs> Ready? Yep. Boom.
You know, when people ask me how Gene and Dustin were different as actors, I'd say that they're both brilliant actors, but very different. And I think that that was wonderful is that Gene sort of will find a choice as an actor, and typically the, the right choice, the best choice, and play that choice his two or three or four times. Whereas Dustin is, is again, he's trying to, he's, he's getting the full range. I think the truth of it is, is that I think one thing that differentiates maybe uh, Gene and I is I do like to do extensive research. I know Gene has told me that he's done some in the past. He certainly did it on French Connection. But I just enjoy it. I try to make everything as real as possible because the, from there you, then you can get into whatever, poetry or whatever. For me, the most important thing is, is tension in the scene. And I, I feel that scenes are best when they have a, a great deal of tension. And then you, you work maybe against that. You, you don't necessarily try to further that. Once you have established it, then you try to do a variety of things to, to make that interesting for an you audience. You think Jerry cares about negligent distribution? You got damn right. They do. You you know, damn right. Most of them can't even say the word. Oh, oh, fuck it. Fuck that cutting show. <laughs> Gene, in fact, is a very sort of quiet guy, very soft-spoken, and it's easy to take an idea he has as simply just kind of a throwaway suggestion. In fact, everything he says has meaning. Can we stop? Stop. Uh, I thought I saw a light change. Somebody just went out. It was kind of tense for me. I don't know if it was for you, but to have a scene, a five-page scene, uh, kind of hanging over your head for, for, well, for Dusty it was about six weeks, and for me a month. It was stressful. And, and I knew it was going to be, I worked real hard on the, on the lines, which I normally don't do. I like to keep it a little bit fresh and kind of searching. Well, you, you had big chunks of monologue. Every fucking line in the script we got. You know, one of the things we were talking about is that when you do stage, you think, oh, I can't wait to do a stage play. We were talking about this yesterday because uh, this was like an elongated version because when you're doing a play, we, we shared that, is that when you wake up in the morning, you open your eyes, and the first thing you think of, I got to do a play tonight. Am I going to be any good? Is the audience going to be there? Am I going to be able to, you know? And it, it, you, anybody who's done a play, you walk around all day with this cloud over your head. There's a kind of a fear of getting too far away from the work. I don't think I ever done a film before where you finish and then you, you know, usually you're in a movie you're, and you're, you get in that kind of groove of, oh, okay, this is, this feels all right, and you can stay there until you're done with the movie. That, now you're done with the movie, and you go on about your life, and you, that, that thing goes away. And I think what he's, Gene Sarbaugh, you don't know whether you're going to get that back. I mean, you don't, you just, it's ephemeral. So, There's know. a kind of a letdown after a movie, too. I mean, like, that you're holding yourself together. And uh, for yeah, me, exactly. it, it, I never had that. So this, this past, you know, six weeks or whatever, um, I was still kind of, up and this this gorilla was sitting there on my uh, shoulder, uh, but it, as it turned out, uh, it was it, we both feel it was it was good work, um, which leads us to believe it will be cut out of the movie after. Yeah, the first probably because yeah. there there wasn't any young people in the scene. None, no. We wanted a girl to walk through in a bikini and say, "Oh, I thought it was the ladies' room." Yes, we're talking about my client, my case, and the, and, and the system of law. That has governed this country for way back that you would just kill him. <laughs> I have no fucking idea what to say to him. <laughs> There was something that happened. I complimented the director last night. It was a great accident, and not and that was is it. It's a, we're at the sink, and you know it's a set, so they got these things holding up the sink, these legs, the iron legs, and I hit it one time, and because it's just a set, it fell over during a take, and we, you know, it's like it just collapsed. All right, it's not a very good bathroom. <laughs> I looked at it, and we laughed, and I picked it up, tried to keep the dialogue going, trying to put it back, you know, you because you're just like, you're on stage, that's what you do on stage, you just keep going. A system of law that over 200 years, a, here, let's get rid of it, keep the scene going. A system of law for over 200 years, a system that calls for 12 people to sit and listen to the testimony of witnesses, and that includes my witness, Fitch, that you just, no, that, no go back, go back. A, a, a system of law, and that includes my witness, that you, that, and that includes my witness, fella, that you just disappeared. And he didn't cut, most directors will say cut, and he did not cut. And I think that literally broke the ice. Yeah. And we started, you know what I mean? Yeah. No, and, and, and after that, we started uh, yeah. kind of playing. 
which was, you know, that's why they call it a play, actually, is because you do, you, do, you, you play. And when you, when you do play, I think people watching it enjoy it. And you get your name in the paper. But Jacob Wood and all the other gun violence victims, they remain rotting in their cribs. If I knew this next line, I would say it, obviously. If I knew it, I would help you. For me, it was great fun working uh, with Dusty because uh, Dusty's the kind of actor that, that whatever I said or did, any in inflection, you would pick up on it and, well, you're and, same and, and give it back so that you get this little ping pong uh, match going. Some people can do that, some people can't, and, and it, was, it was great fun to, to uh, to do that. Uh, is, that, is, that is that why you're in this? Is that why you're in this to protect the Constitution? Uh, of course not. I'm in it to win, just like you are. Because that's what I was hired to do. Everything else is just colored by I've moved too soon. Is that why you're in this to protect is that oh, is that why you're in this to protect the Constitution? Is that it? No, no I'm in it to win, just mm -hmm. like you are, because that's what I was hired to do. Yeah. Everything else is colored balls. Yeah. Colored bubbles? That's what you call a rule of law that's been in this country for over two hundred years? Colored bubbles? A system that says there's 12 people that sit and listen to the testimony and hear uh, the t uh, I'm coming in. Colored bubbles? That's what you call a system of law we've had in this country for over 200 years? A system that calls for 12 people to sit and listen to testimony of witnesses, Fitch? And that I think the spine of the washroom scene is, in a sense, the disarming honesty of the villain. And it's not only in the writing, but I think it's in, in, in the brilliant choices that Gene Hackman made. He's the first to say that w when he gets the part of a so-called villain, he tries to find the humanity of the character. That's all he cares about, because everything else is there. Interesting when you, when you do a character that you don't, you don't politically you don't believe in, and to do it as, as fully as you can. That's the fascinating thing about acting, I, th I think. Well, it, it's, it's such a nice story, Wendell. Really. It's just further proof of why you can't beat me. Because you may be right, but the thing of it is, I don't give a shit. What's more, I never have. Toward the end, like in the 11th hour of doing this, this scene, I started hearing things that I hadn't heard. That was really yeah. strange. Yeah. And if I'd had the strength, I would have asked the director to, <laughs> to continue on because I, I started hearing yeah. things yeah. that one could do. You probably did the same thing. But I did, we, were, we were kind of finished. We were knackered. Well, stage actors, I mean, I mean if, if, we're origi if you're originally trained as stage actors, which we were, that's the way it is, especially when you get an audience. You rehearse for like three, four mm -hmm. weeks, and the first time there's an audience there, it's like you're hearing stuff that you've never heard before because you're hearing it through them. So somehow that may have, that, I think that took place also. So, yeah. you know, we should thank Gene and Dustin. We want to thank you. <laughs> the hard thing would be if we had another scene like that to do today. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Oh, I, that would be really tough. It's a good story, Mr. Roy. <clears throat> but it's just for the proof of why you can't beat me. Because you may be right. But the thing of it is, I don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm not going to do that with this one. <laughs> Is that the end? We should stop rehearsing right now.